building a little cabinet here and this cabinet has got a really well-known classical detail called a broken pediment. You can see that here's the pediment on the uh, cabinet as if it was the entryway to a door or the gable end of a classical temple but we've broken it in the middle so we can insert another little ornament. Uh, in this case we've got a little finial and in order to make the broken pediment we need three moldings not just one and I'll tell you why. We have the main molding right here which actually forms the I guess you'd call it the crown of the or the corona of the pediment and that's this molding here it's a standard uh, crown molding I've made it on the shaper because I want it to be square on the back instead of beveled off but we also have two other moldings the return molding here and the return molding here at the top and if you look you can see that these return moldings are very different from each other this one is quite shallow this one is quite steep and there's a good reason for that the reason that we don't do the obvious thing the obvious thing would be to just cut a miter here and a miter here and return it with the same molding just like you would if you were going around uh, uh, the case uh, crown on a ceiling but that wouldn't look right I can actually draw it on here I can take this molding and that's what a return would look like a mitered return and you can imagine what it would look like down here too and you can see that something looks very wrong about this if we miter the molding back using the same molding you'll see that this line is not plumb this little line is not plumb and it looks wrong it looks as if we had just made the level uh, molding on the level like this and just swung it up into place so that's the whole exercise that we're going to go through today to make this broken pediment I'm going to make the left hand piece for this broken pediment and I'll show you how to set the miter saw up and how to make the cuts and it's actually very simple and after I've made the cuts the top cut and the bottom cut because this is a left hand piece this will be the top and this will be the bottom after I've made the cuts you'll see how that develops the actual shape of the moldings that we're going to use to return our rake molding the first step is to set the saw at the rake angle of the molding and that is 32 degrees I'm going to get stuck in the 31.6 detent if I don't watch it and then the next step is to tip the saw for the left hand uh, upper one I'm going to tip it to the right set it on 45 there's a little piece of bad molding at the start start here and I'm going to cut past it and there's our first cut I've set the saw at 32 degrees. 32 degrees is the pitch of the rake molding. So the miter is equal to the pitch of the molding. And then I've set the bevel of the saw at 45 degrees. 45 degrees is the angle that the return piece goes back at. So I've got the miter is the same as the pitch and the bevel of the saw is actually set to make our level cut. The length of this molding is seven and three quarters. So I'll make a mark at seven and three quarters. And now I'm going to cut the bottom cut. Once again, I don't have to change this miter angle because my pitch is constant and these two lines are actually parallel. I had to turn the bevel the other way because this miter is on the left side rather than the right side. Let's take this molding over to the drawing and see how it fits. There we are. Here's our molding. And as you can see, the angles are correct. Look at it from behind. We can see that we've made plumb cuts here. That was where I had this miter set, uh, 32 degrees. If you look at it here, you can see that we've made the 45 degree cuts that give us our returns. 
we look straight on it, you can see that this is the profile of the molding which returns back this way, and this is the profile of the molding that returns back this way. I'm going to show you a little trick to make a pattern for this return molding. Here's how I do it. I've taken a block of wood, I've cut it at 45, cut it off short, and I'm going to trace the molding on it. This molding is cut at 45, so I can push it right up against my block and it'll fit tight. And then I can trace it. Just like that. Now we'll take it to the bandsaw, stand it up like this, and cut along these lines, and we'll end up with a short piece of the correct molding, which we can use as a pattern to make our shaper knife. I'm going to cut along these lines on the bandsaw. You probably are noticing that this is a very small piece of wood, and my fingers are very close to the blade of the bandsaw. I feel very comfortable working with a bandsaw, and I feel safe doing this, but the, the bandsaw, if you touch it with your fingers, will cut, will cut you. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this, I will show you later on another way that we can solve this problem without doing this cut on the bandsaw. This is a little tight, so I'm going to take a couple waist cuts and then I'll get it from the other side. Here's your little molding. If you look at the butt end, you can see that's the profile. With a little sanding, if we had a very short return, we could actually just miter this and use it for the, uh, for the return. But I'm going to use this to make a pattern, or use it as a pattern for making a shaper knife. Here's a little molding that I, we made, and here's the shaper knife I made to make that molding. You can see that that fits the shape of the molding. You can uh, find out more about making shaper knives by looking up an article I wrote and this is Carpentry a few years ago. We finished the bottom molding here. Now let's look at the top for a moment. We could use the technique we just used uh, for the bottom molding to make a shaper knife for this molding, but this molding has a long return on it, but this has only got a little short return. So I'm going to show you another trick which will save us all the effort of making a new shaper knife. The first step here is to make a negative version of this molding. This is the standard crown molding that we're using on the rake. I'm going to put it on a block of wood and I'm going to trace it again like that and I'm going to saw away this area here leaving a negative version of the molding. I'm going to leave the line on the wood here.
This is the reverse of our rake molding. Here's a little scrap of the rake molding. You'll see that they fit together just like that. I've set the chop saw up at 32 degrees, that's the rake, and I've set the bevel up at 45 degrees. That's the way I set it up to make the top cut if I was cutting a miter on the rake molding. In this case, I'm going to put a scrap of molding there, and here's my negative mold, which I ripped down to make it a little easier to cut. I'm going to glue this on here to make it a little more secure when I put it on the saw, and we can pop it back apart after we cut it. And this is the piece we keep. Now we're going to use the negative pattern we made to lay out the top cut on the rake molding. We don't even have to miter this. We can just make a cut on a square-ended piece. I've made a mark for my length. I take the pattern that I made. I lock it together with the molding. I slide it up to the mark, pin it, and I draw a pencil line right along there like that. Then I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and we'll just saw it out. These are nice gradual turns so I can do it uh, entirely uh, without making backup cuts. go. A little 80 grit and it looks like a beautiful tight miter. Now I'm going to miter the bottom level molding. In my hands I've got a piece of the rake molding and a piece of the level bottom molding. As you can see their profiles are quite different. The bottom molding is really foreshortened in the horizontal dimension. Nonetheless this is mitered as you might remember at 32 degrees and 45 degrees. This will just be mitered at 45 degrees. You'll also notice that I ripped the top of the level molding at 32 degrees. You'll see in a minute why we did that. Here's the, a piece of the bottom level molding. And I'm going to put it down with its back on the table saw, I mean on the table of the chop saw. And I'm going to set the saw at zero. Zero makes a 90 degree cut. And that's because this is a level molding and we're cutting along as if the molding continued level. And I have the bevel set at 45 because it's a miter. So the, the miter is set at the rake angle, zero, and the bevel is set at the miter angle, which is 45. In order to build this mock-up, because we haven't got the cabinet made yet, I've cut this 4x4 at a 32 degree angle. We've nailed the level piece on it, and as you recall, I've cut the rake piece with the miter set at 32 degrees and the bevel set at 45 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at this. Here we've got the level molding and the rake molding. Let's take a look at the top return. As you can see, and maybe remember, this was scoped on the bandsaw. But with a little bit of sanding, this will look like a perfect miter too.